the 2015 user conference wrap up. I'm sorry to see this conference end. This was a great one. Lori, thank you for getting us together. And again, welcome everybody. Um, we mentioned if you didn't get here uh, at the conference, you missed a great one. We're going to try to share some of that, not make you feel too bad, but bad enough that you want to make sure to come next year. So more on the shore was our theme and Sharon's artwork there. It, it's pretty darn cool, Sharon. I didn't know you had that art instinct in you. Um, so we had a good group, 48 ACEWARE partners, 9 ACEWARE staff gathered at Myrtle Beach. Uh, we had four pre-conference hands-on workshops that were well attended. And <clears throat> I, I tell you, we went 8.30 to 5. So I mean, we you got your money's worth, and uh, staff were pretty pooed at the end of that day. As far as the sessions themselves, uh, over 42 conference sessions, including a wrap-up, <clears throat> with four partner presentations. So covered a lot of ground. Uh, some of the sessions we're going to bring back, we'll tell you about uh, through a webinar format. Um, some of the favorites were Lindsay's on editing email templates, Karen Rankin, a uh, customer talking about Express Reg pages for AceWeb, and again, Brittany, uh, another customer talking about multiple AceWeb interfaces. So those were some of the, the many that we covered. We did not get as big a crowd in, but one of the features of a conference we try to do every year is to do Ask a Tech, where partners can sign up to meet with their tech and go over some issues that they're wanting to go over on their own databases. So um, activities of the event, besides being, again, having some beautiful weather right off the shore where we can get to that sand or we, after a long day, we had a reception at Ripley's Aquarium. <clears throat> and again, a uh, beautiful place, a nice chance for fellowship, and uh, just general uh, chance to get acquainted and share uh, swap ideas outside the normal uh, session mode. And again, note there are lots more pictures on our Aceware Facebook page. And we'll talk about that later. But again, uh, if you wanted to kind of see what you missed, uh, you know, get on Facebook. We've got a page, and we'd love to have you. New features. Now we're getting into some of the meat. What were some of the things that were new that we debuted or really kind of made sure everybody knew about here at the conference? Uh, number one, <clears throat> new data entry screens. Now, several of you have offered comments. We had sent this around to get feedback on basically the name screen and the course screen. And what you'll note is that uh, it's hard to tell in the screenshot, but these screens are bigger. <clears throat> so uh, on some of you with the fancy bill with this fancy screen out there, the screen will show up bigger. Um, again, let me pause for a second. Lori, we getting a screen refresh. We're on the course screen now. We, we keeping up we seem to be spot doing check on where we are. Mm -hmm. We're doing okay. fine. All right. So new core screens. A couple of the big things is that we've tried to move, again, with the larger screen, make the screens a little less clutter, give a little bit more space in there. Uh, your buttons that used to be tucked right in here are now kind of organized on the right. Your navigation is still there. The main tools, add, edit, save, are still there. Now, right now, um, this is available. The version was posted yesterday. Uh, from your customer resources downloads. Right now, only the name screen and the course screen have the new format. <clears throat> but Matthew has promised us that that is, he'll be basically kind of attacking a screen at a time. And I think the sequence is going to be registration pay, and then it'd be faculty firm. Uh, they'll be added as the updates are posted in the next uh, few weeks. So um, those will be coming. Obviously, course and name uh, are the two of the big ones that you get into. So that is one of the big deals. The other one is SMS. And again, with cell phone usage being the tool of choice, <clears throat> one of the options that Matthew has put in Manager, is SM8, is the ability to send short message service, text messages to your students. You can use text messaging to send to a, a notice to a class, just like the class email blast. You can send student reminders, like the upcoming class reminder. 
<clears throat> for emergency notification. And this is probably the biggest one that uh, it would be probably worth, in my opinion, uh, implementing SMS, which, by the way, there is no cost to you from ACEWARE. There is like a minimal cost from the client or from this agency or this partner, and I'll tell you in a bit. <clears throat> but um, if you've got an emergency on campus, uh, whether a weather emergency or a disaster emergency, um, the idea of an email, a lot of times people aren't going to check till the end of the day or later on, whereas their cell phones are connected to their hip and they're going to get that message. Again, individual message or being able to send an SMS message to everybody and report kind of the do email for those of you who are using the <clears throat> email blast tool. Lori, questions? Was there a comment there? No. Okay. I think you're fine. Um, now, what do you need to do for SMS? Well, first of all, you need to be upgraded to SM8, uh, and you need to make a, create an account with Twilio. Um, text messaging is not like uh, email blasts where there's kind of a common carrier, uh, generally without creating a whole structure within your campus, you have to use a third party. And uh, we feel that Twilio is as good a partner as any. There is this $1 a month charged to create a cell phone for your school that would be the, quote, sending cell phone. And for every message that is sent, it is 0.75 cents or 0 0.007 uh, you know, of a buck. So that it's less than a penny per message to send a text messaging. So <clears throat> again, it's your call to decide what, um, you know, what's worth sending a penny on uh, to get a quick message out to a student. Um, you also obviously need a cell phone number on the name record, and you need to have an opt-in. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to actually bring up a name record going to indicate. So the idea is that on the cell phone, if you're using SMS messaging, you need to have an opt-in. It's even more so, you know, you want to make sure you're respecting uh, your students' requests about using the cell phone for messaging, if they, uh, and they, and again, both for etiquette and for you, you know, customer service, uh, you want to make sure that you ask your students for permission to, to if they would like to have messaging, uh, text messages sent to them. All right, I'm going to take Jack, a breather. We do have a question about that. Can we talk? All right, for fire a away. And I, I have Matthew on the line. We we haven't uh, Matthew and Sharon are setting in, and so if. <laughs> We may let Matthew answer. Go ahead, Lori. All right. Our slide says 0 .0075 per message, and Jeff is asking if it is per message or per recipient. Per recipient. Uh, no. Uh, Matthew, what is? Per, per recipient. Per message, per recipient. So, <clears throat> yeah, so if you're sending a class blast to 50 people, uh, those are 50 messages, so that would be a whole... What is 50 times 0 .75? 45, uh, 37.5 cents or something like that. <clears throat> uh, so yes, it is per individual message per student, not um, you know a class blast or a email uh, do email blast. Good question. Um, that was the other thing we were going to ask. Um, cell phone, Matthew. What are we? Um, th there is more more information available for this in the help guide. <clears throat> has that. Um, that's one of the things we might uh, do a webinar on at some point uh, down the road is to, uh, if we've got some people getting into that, to, to mention it. Any other questions on the SMS option? I believe that's it. Okay. Other new goodies, and this is one Lori could talk about, but an SOP manual. <clears throat> and uh, Lori, I'm going to actually let you, I'm going to load that up, but tell us a little what happened to get to this, and I'll show people <laughs> where to get to it. We formed a committee, which was probably our first mistake, <laughs> no, no. but we formed a committee to try to, to, to put together an SOP manual because at last year's conference, that's what people said they really wanted and needed. 
And at the very first meeting, it became obvious that really what they wanted to do was to recreate the online help manual, which wasn't going to happen. So we began to rethink it, and we thought about what we really wanted this to do. And we thought about the fact that if you had had this information on the very first day you started to work with student manager, you would have been way better off. Uh, and it, we thought about it from the opposite direction. If you were leaving your job, what information would you leave behind for the person who was going to pick up where you left off? And so we put together this, the SOP manual, which has a lot of fill-in-the-blank type stuff in it, fill in your information, how you are doing things, not necessarily step by step, but the options you've chosen, the preferences, the whys, the hows. So, and we've got yeah, a lot of feedback on the SOP manual and a lot of changes to make to what we've already posted, and then we will repost. Yeah, and I think uh, the whole point of this is that the uh, standard procedures manual for, for school number one, for partner number one, is going to be different from that for partner number two, but the point is that you should be able to take this manual and modify it. And again, it's PDF, Lori, we may want to uh, talk about putting it out as a, as a word so people could actually copy and edit if they are, don't have Adobe Editor, uh, but that is something to, that would be useful. Now, the other one that has been worked on for a while is the top reports guide. Now, we kind of started off talking about this as a top 40 reports guide, um, but that what we wanted to do with that is, and I'm kind of, I'm on the website actually to show you, where we have that is under student manager resources, <clears throat> um, guides and training manuals. So we have both <clears throat> the uh, standard operating procedures and the top reports. And what the top reports guide is, is your ability to, or it's our kind of idea of what are some of the, whoa, what are some, of, I'm trying to navigate with, with PDFs here, and I'm not even handling that. There we go. Um, so a top reports guide to basically, and, and some, some of you old timers, you've kind of been there, done that, but I would recommend, even if you've been around for a while, that what you ought to do is download this, take a look at it, and look at these reports to see if they're ones you're using, uh, if they're ones that you ought, to, um, you ought to think about using. So the beauty of the report is it actually shows you a thumbnail of what that report looks like, gives you the location of where you'll find it, uh, the label that's on it, and what a typical query might be. So again, that's a resource for you. Uh, if you're a new user, I would think particularly useful. If you are a, an established user, one of the notes is that these reports are all from the current Aceware demo, the student manager demo. So if you, d you say, well, I don't have a report that looks quite like this, you may not have had your reports updated. Um, you can download the demo and copy and paste the report or get your tech to uh, help you do that so that you can actually get these updated reports in your system. So again, that I think will be a very useful uh, piece. Any questions on the top 40 or the SOP? Lori, anything buzzing in there that you want to cover? Just clapping and cheering. Good. All right. So awards luncheon. We we have a program that was started last year called Aceware Champion Educators. And what we try to do is rec recognize partners who have really gone above and beyond uh, implementing Aceware, supporting Aceware at their school. This year we honor two people, Brittany Thomason at the Auburn University at Montgomery, and uh, we had a whole list of, of uh, things about Brittany that people were, were clapping about. So the other was Lynn Harsh, who is a senior business manager at Boise State. So again, we congratulate those two, and Brittany was able to make it the conference. So we had the opportunity to see, do that in person. Uh, partner anniversaries, we've been recognizing, again, through Sharon's leadership, partners who have been with us for um, the duration. Uh, Texas Christian was, oh, and I got the names wrong. Oh, I got Susie. I'm sorry. I got 
that's actually a, um, that is um, Georgia Regents University. I'm missing Susie uh, Mahoney from Texas Christian. So we got the right group, wrong picture. Uh, now we've got University of El Paso. I'll slow down. University of El Paso, 20 years. Georgia Social Work, 20 years. And Indiana State, five years. We're partners there who were celebrating anniversary year. So apologies to uh, TCU on that. Um, staff learning and new tricks. And again, one of the things that a couple people have said is that the looking up name searches in SM8, that rather than the look up active, that the blue binoculars might be speedier. And so we're we're looking at that. We're, we're thinking we should have both of them the same speed, <clears throat> but we will take care of that. One of the other things we discovered were some old tricks. And uh, one of the things that I didn't realize that some folks might not have picked up is that you have a clone name, paste name feature that's actually been in Manager for hundreds of years. Oh, not quite that long. but. Um, so the idea that in Student Manager, and if you look at Edit, Clone Name, Paste Name, Alt W, Alt V, if you're editing or adding a name, and I'm going to go next to uh, Ryan, Ryan Anderson at University of Wisconsin. So if Ryan, uh, if we've got another staff person from the University of Wisconsin, and we're editing Ryan's name. And the point is, whenever you add a name, it automatically is put to the clipboard. <clears throat> or if you're just landing on a name, you can do Alt-W to copy that name to the clipboard. So now we've saved that name, and we're going to add a new name. And we're going to add Joe Smith, Joseph. Now. Rather than copying or looking up a firm, which technically you could do, we're going to go paste name, and because we're out of that. And what it did is copy all of the data from the previous name. Now, I didn't have a phone number or an email for uh, Ryan, but that would have copied it over. I could put in the new title, head of IT, and put in his phone numbers. But that copy name, paste name is one of the things that people didn't realize was in there. My favorite, whoa, back. My favorite, the F2 key. And again, in the, in the goodies section, get back to manager. Uh, the F2 key, which is the upcoming list of classes, uh, quick count of classes, where you can do a quick count of X days out get a view of upcoming classes, hit escape, and you're right back to what you were doing. Other one was the Alt-3 key, uh, copy to clipboard, data from the name course instructor. And the big, the big deal on this is that if you wanted to copy Mr. Smith's information, I'll put in a phone number for him, 703, not the right number, never mind that, few Wisconsinites. So if I did Alt and the number 3, then I open up a, a blob of information and paste it. It will paste the information from that name into wherever I'm going. And the point of that is if you wanted to copy a name and address to put in a letterhead or just paste it somewhere else, the Alt 3 lets you do that. And again, that works on names, course, and instructor base info. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, several customers did not realize we have an Easter egg in Manager, especially for Star Wars fans and for you uh, real Star Wars, for you Trekkies, uh, May the 4th uh, Be With You Day is coming up. <clears throat> and if you wanted to know what that's all about, um, give, give me a call and I'd be happy to share with you, share with you uh, the special tool that makes that happen. Um, and I think that we can, I've got it turned on in my system here, password maintenance. So you've got a little bit of humor to go along with your day or take you back to get you ready for the new Star Trek movie that is, that is coming up. All right, uh, next, now, Maxi Flores, we, we instituted a couple of unique things to kind of help people get acquainted. And we had a mingle bingo where you had to, find people who knew certain things or were doing certain procedures 
within their aceware. And Maxi, uh, Maxi came up with a winning ticket first before everybody else. We'd like to know, what, one of the things that we benefit, uh, the Aceware staff benefit from conference, is getting feedback from customers. And we like to think we do that throughout the course of the year. But we'd like to know how we can best connect with you. And Lori, I think we've got a, a poll here that you're going to ask us to fill out. I do. How many of the following Aceware resources have you used in the last two months? And you may check all that apply. So if you have okay. been to the forum and you've looked up something online and you've been to YouTube to look us up, check them all. So, so yeah, fill in the box there. We're, we're trying to decide or we're, we're always looking for ways of how can we uh, get information to you. How can we listen to what you're doing out there? So uh, fill in the box on that and tell us what you've been doing to uh, connect. Now, we didn't have on there, you know, attended an ACEWARE conference. Obviously, we know who is here. And again, we want to thank the folks who did uh, take, um, who did take off and uh, join us for the conference last week. So, okay. All right, we are how are we doing about on the down percentage? to it, so we're going to go three, two, one. We'll close the poll and share the results. Okay, I got a little bit of everything there. Help file, good. Um, newsletter, great. Glad to see that. So, uh, yeah, we'll um, let me let me kind of proceed with that. Lori, thank you. I'm 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 back uh, back in charge now. Yeah. Um, one of the things, uh, again, this idea, what is the best way for you to alert you to new tips, tricks, and new features? Um, one of the things I want to kind of re-remember for people is that the Aceware forums, as, and I saw some of you were, were signed up for the forum. If you've not signed up for the forum, that's probably the best way for you to keep track of uh, new features coming out of Aceware. Uh, Matthew posts on the forum uh, under the student manager update section every time a new build is released. Now the latest build is 21, has the new screens on. It was released this Wednesday, yesterday. Uh, and again, if you have not signed up, you can, I mean, you can join the forum and go in and check the update date. But if you would like, there is a way to automatically get an email every time Matthew posts an update. So that, uh, again, we, we, we struggle with this. We don't want to blast you an email every time there's an update because we are constantly updating manager, adding new features. Uh, but we also want you to have an opportunity to know when something new is going on. So um, the, the forum has info on that. Um, and again, that's something you can join right from the, the, the main screen of, of the Aceware homepage. Um, the other thing is staying in touch. And you were noted, we talked about newsletter, we talked about Facebook, YouTube channel. Again, under the stay in touch section of the, um, of the Aceware homepage, aceware.com, you've got these ways that you can keep in touch with us. Uh, Sharon, you want to talk about Facebook or uh, the kind of things that people are doing or seeing or what you'd, um, any ideas that you'd like to get feedback from on the Facebook page? Well, we use our Facebook page primarily kind of to be a little more informal and, and um, tell you what's going on at the cabin and abroad. So um, at the conference, we had 11 new likes, and so I'm hopeful that okay. people will keep that up and um, stay tuned there because I also like to do updates like we posted yesterday that Matthew had the new screens up, and I like to post trainings that are coming up. And so any kind of new thing, you can check on Facebook. It'll tie in good with the new newsletter and things. So join in the conversation and, and do some sharing. Very good. All right. Um, <clears throat> and then again, back to the idea of hearing from you. Suggestions, wish list items. Um, again, oh, I'm going to slide back to uh, one, whoa, wrong direction. Come back here. I, there we go. One of the things on uh, the forum right now is that we have a suggestion forum item. 
where people can post suggestions to uh, our staff. One of the things that I think we're going to do in uh, the next go-round here as far as how to get wish list items, for you to suggest items to submit and to get to the website here, uh, is that we're going to add, Cheryl's, Cheryl's going to do this, it won't be till next week, we're going to add under customers a submit wish list item so that if you've got a wish, uh, something you'd like student manager or AceWeb to do or just a general kind of I wish I could using the tools that Aceware offers, um, you can go into the customer uh, drop down and there'll be a submit form here to put in your name, email, and what it is you'd like to have student manager do because that is um, again all part of you know how can we help you fight the alligators, uh, get through the kinds of things uh, that you've got to do every day. So, all right. Well, I think that's kind of it for our wrap up. I said we would try to keep this fairly brief. Uh, watch our web page for details for upcoming events next year's conference webinars we we are now back into the webinar routine uh, Karen Rankin will be doing rep reprising her session at the conference on building express registration forms with aceweb uh, in um, I guess two weeks from yesterday 130 and then Brittany uh, Brittany Thomason from Auburn University has agreed that she will do one on using alternate interfaces with aceweb uh, we're picking a time with her, but we're aiming for the week of May 26, the week after Memorial Day. So again, those will be ones we'll be announcing in a bit. You can put those on the calendar. Um, Lori, any questions or follow-up things that people might want to ask about? I think um, we've tried to give some highlights of what went on. Matthew, Sharon, anybody our else want to? most popular session was our uh, email templates. And Lindsay Email has template. already recorded webinars on those, so right. we're good. Very good. And again, uh, just, to, just to kind of make sure we're talking about the email templates, editing email templates, the automatic email or the email blast from manager, under webinar archive, uh, we've got under, I believe, operations, well, editing transactional emails. Uh, we've got two webinar series, one on the transactional emails, <clears throat> and then I think we've got another couple of email, uh, using email in general. So again, there are resources, again, in the webinar archive for folks so that, uh, there, you know, we and of course the help guide, the, the online help guide, which is always there. Oh, one last thing on the online help guide, and uh, Currently on the online help guide, we've got a what's new. Well, the what's new at this point was primarily major issues from upgrades from 7 to 8. Um, Cheryl is going to be uh, adding to this kind of a new goodies report. Uh, again, we continue to add features and new goodies to 8 so that you'll have under the online help guide, there'll be the new goodie sheet, which uh, used to be a, a separate form, and I think it was on the website. So we're going to try to tie that into the online help guide, and that would be for you to just keep track of what, what new things Matthew is adding to student manager. All right, Matthew, any uh, closing things you'd want to add? You good? I'm good. All right. <clears throat> Again, he's busy working on the new screen designs, making those screens bigger, standardizing the uh, the the tab format, and those are will be coming out over the next weeks. Um, Lori, again, thank you, and I want to thank. We're talking about conference. Emily's not setting in, but Sharon, uh, Sharon, and Cheryl Scott and Emily Taylor were the three ringleaders, the the chef, the master of ceremonies, and organization that made the conference what it is. So uh, for those of you that attended, you can share with me our thanks for those three on all the work, all the work they did in getting that put together. So, so thank you guys. So, All right, Lori, again, thank you for putting this together. We will see you guys in a couple of weeks. I uh, hope you all have a happy May Day, a happy May the 4th be with you day. 
And um, again, we look forward to hearing with you, staying in touch. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye.